What's up, squidgy slingers and water-fed pole wiggling wagglers, and welcome back to the Tribe My YouTube channel. I haven't actually posted for a little while. July 2021 has been a bit crazy, a bit mad. Um, so I had a lot of work to do, and also wasn't very well during July as well. I ended up phoning, phoning an ambulance at one point, so it got rather exciting. Uh, we won't go too much into that. I'm all better now, so that's good. That's the main thing. That's good news. And so yeah, work ambulance and i bought another motorbike so july, july's been pretty busy um not gonna lie so now we're into august and i thought i'd take you with me on this next job it's a nice traditional window clean ground floor and first floor to clean frames panes sills and doors so i thought i'd take you along with me and show you this job and i'm not going to put any music along with the job that seems quite popular a lot of you guys and girls like to uh, see that last video i did a little while ago where I didn't actually add any music. I was just explaining what I'm doing and why I do it. So I thought I would do that again today with this job. So stay tuned. Right guys, so this is the job here. I don't know if you can see, it's just kind of behind this bush. It's called Bogey Bank. So I'm gonna grab a pair of disposable gloves. I personally find that if I don't wear gloves, that uh, as the days and the weeks go past, it really wrecks my hands. My skin dries out and starts cracking and all sorts, which ain't pleasant. And I cannot be bothered creaming my hands every day. So uh, just get a pair of these off of Amazon for about 15, 20 pounds for a box of 100. And that'll do me. So there we go. Gloves on, let's get the ladder off, shall we? Right, so let's grab our traditional gear. So let's get the trad belt on, tr trad harness. There we go. All right, so what have we got on? We've got the Unger pouch. I've got one on the front, one on the back, and that's got all my cloths and uh, cleaning brushes and all sorts of stuff in there. Bronze wool, just there, and a little bottle of soap as well detergent on my right hip we've got the samurai bucket on a belt version 2 with two accelerator liquidator squeegees 16 inch and a 12 so chuck them in there the uh, latest partition of the samurai has a rubber protector between the two squeegee slots so that saves you getting any indents on your squeegee rubber and on my left hip for my applicator is the same bucket on a belt it's a samurai version 2 i've just taken the uh, insert out because i don't need it all right so we've got our bucket of water and that's all that's in it and there's a bit of froth and soap in there but that's just from using my applicator so if you haven't already seen my videos before what i do is a clean bucket of water nothing added to it and then i take my little bottle of soap there and just apply a line of soap on each side shake off the excess and then ready to go i'm running the applicator a little bit wetter than i normally would it's quite a hot day today so if it wasn't too too hot i'd probably squeeze some of the excess water out of my applicator but because it's quite hot and humid today i'm going to just run my applicator a little bit more saturated than i normally would now i've got a little portable water fed pole system not going to use that i'm actually mainly traditional i just use my water fed pole for those hard to reach areas that's just personal preference and i don't think i'm probably going to take these actually this is a traditional um, window cleaning poles extension poles this one's 30 feet long and this one's 12 but we're not going to use them today we're just going to stick to ladders and get this job done so let's get going and the ladder that i'm using is a 27 rung Ramsey A-frame ladder. I can leave a link in the description below for you so you can check that out if you fancy this kind of ladder. But it's purposely designed for window cleaning. It comes to a point at the top and it's got a protective rubber cap with little grooves in the cap so that you can lean it against the edges of things and uh, no worries at all about damaging frames 
or slipping off of any surfaces. It's a really good ladder. And it's also um, quite wide at the bottom, so it gives you more stability. Okay. Right, okay, so we're gonna start with these three windows up there first. Okay, so what I'll have to do is do these two windows from here and then move the ladder around to get that final last window around there. But being up nose to glass, I can see exactly what's going on. I can see all these little bugs, droppings and whatnot, which I wouldn't see from down there. So let's get all that nice and clean, especially on white PVC. Now, sometimes you need to soak these little droppings for a minute or so and then give them a rub with the cloth and then it comes off after that. And if it still doesn't come off with that, then you can break out things like pink stuff or Unger rub out and that'll normally take it off. But because this is done once a month, normally any little stains on the PVC will, will come off. But if it's a first time clean or a job you're only doing once a year, perhaps, Maybe good to keep things like Unger rub out and the pink stuff, anything like that, on you at all times because you just never know where you're going to run into these stains on the frames. And obviously just charge accordingly because this takes longer to do. Okay, so get all that framework. So I work frames, panes, then sills. So outside, inside, finish at the bottom. And now everything's done. Like I say, this is the protective cap on the A-frame ladder. So you can see how the ladder comes to a point. And this cap has basically a crisscross groove cut out of the cap. So it can actually lock onto the edges of buildings and frames and things like that as well. You can move it around or try and move it around and it won't budge because it's locked into a groove in here. So it's, uh, no, it's a really good ladder. I've had it quite for quite a while. Bit, a little bit on the heavy side, but uh, as long as you have your wheat bix you're all right. Okay, so I like to pre-wet the squeegee, because if you try using it on a hot day and without priming your rubber, without wetting it first, it can squeak quite a lot. Now, the green rubber that you see is called Unger Power Rubber. I'll leave a link in the description below. It's a really good rubber to use, and even in the heat, it works quite well. Most squeegee rubbers in the heat will stick a little bit, but some are worse than others. This green stuff seems pretty good. You can actually prime your squeegee as well, just actually on the window if you want to. So, so you can just kind of move it around. Even that's sticking. There we go, now, that's better now. And now that it's wet, there we go, that should glide nicely. So it's a 16 inch liquidator channel. Now you can't actually buy 16 inch channels. You have to buy an 18 and then cut it down. I find with the windows I do, 18 tends to be a little bit big unless I'm doing commercial. But for residential, 18 is just a little bit on the big side. So 16 is a really nice fit. Gets good coverage over the glass and uh, it's not too bad to use, nice and easy. The bigger the channel, normally the harder it is to use. There we go. And the good thing about being up here as well is I can see the, these sills, so I can see what I'm doing. And uh, if the customer decides to have a look out their window to see how well a job you've done of their sills, you've got peace of mind knowing that it's perfect before you drive away. Now, because we're in quite a well, lovely bit of the countryside but a lot of trees and flowers that's the kind of things to be aware of that will potentially be stuck and fuse themselves to frames oh my God, that's looking pretty good nice so i'm just taking my time when i do these videos i like to take my time explain what i'm doing um, but when i'm not filming then i tend to go a bit quicker but uh, when i'm filming i just take my time Right, so to carry the ladder, in case you didn't know, so lean it up straight, keep all the weight going straight up. As soon as you lean the ladder over one way or the other, it starts getting heavy. I normally grab it from either rung four or rung three 
to move it from window to window without having to actually collapse the ladder down. Okay, so keeping the ladder straight, grabbing it from rung four, just lift straight up and I don't lean it forwards or backwards, just keep it perfectly straight. Hopefully you can see that, it's just perfectly straight. Now this is only if you're moving it a little bit. So if you're say just moving it for a couple of feet, not too far at all. So for me, I'm literally just moving it so I can get to this window here. Okay, so again we've got these, see these little brown dots? I don't know if you can see them on the camera, but they're all over the frame. Um, but they just take a bit of persuasion with a cloth, a damp cloth, normally, to come off if you're keeping on top of it. If you're coming around once a month, then normally they come off fairly easy. But if there's any stains that you come across which are more permanent, you can always speak to your customer and ask if they would like a frame restoration service, maybe the next time you're there. But uh, just remember and charge accordingly because doing frame restoration and glass restoration takes a lot, lot longer than just a regular maintenance cleaning type service like what we're doing now with the uh, applicator and the squeegee. Okay, so. I'm really impressed with this Unger green rubber. It's, uh, it's really good. Nice and smooth, works pretty much straight out of the box. And it lasts for ages, really good. I used to be a massive fan of the Etre Master Rubber. Um, if you've watched my videos for the last couple of years, that is the squeegee rubber that I normally recommend. Um, but since this Unger Green stuff has come out, that's my go-to rubber now. So it lasts longer and the glide is actually a bit better than Etre as well. So. But there we are, so perfectly clean frames, panes and sills, so we can proceed down the ladder safely. Now, we'll pop this down here for a second, so we've got the lower stuff to do before we go around the back. All right, so again, come, as soon as we get to our window, the first thing I'm grabbing is my cloth, so I can clean the frames and just find a reasonably clean patch on your cloth, a damp patch, because the damp cloth does really help get those frames clean. And again, if you've got anything stubborn, just give it a little soap up. There we go, it's gone. So this is really why I call myself a window cleaner and detailer, is because I'm really paying attention to those details. It's a bit like a car valeting service. They'll normally come along and, you know, really be very pernickety about their service and getting every little bit off. That's what I do as a window cleaning service. I'm not just a wash and go. I will look for pretty much everything that can be removed off of the glass, the frames and the sills. I'll aim to get that off. There's not many services in my area that are like that. Most are just a quick wash and go type thing. But uh, why fish in the same pond as everybody else when you can find a new pond with a new type of fish? and have the pond to yourself, if that makes sense. <laughs> if it doesn't, then <laughs> pop it in the comments below and I'll try and explain, maybe. Right, cut in, pull across, down, pull across, down, close out. And um, like I've said pretty much every other video, probably bored of me saying it now, but uh, this tool, zero detailing around the window. So you know I've already cleaned the frames, I've soaked up the glass, I've squeegeed it down, so now the only thing left is to wipe up the sill. Um, so that's the only tool that can actually do that at the moment, anyway. Um, giving you that proper zero detailing all the way around with no funky techniques that potentially scrape frames. I know some people like to try and do what's called dive bombing with their stainless steel and brass squeegees, but all that's gonna do is potentially scratch people's frames. You can hear it grinding as it goes down the side of a frame quite a, quite often, trying to achieve that zero detailing. Um, the pros will know what I'm talking about. So hence why companies like this are making them plastic to protect customers' frames. And I believe the Unger Ninja as well, that's got a plastic end clip to it as well. That helps to protect your customers' frames too. That was one of my favorite tools before this zero detailing tool from Moorman came out. 
and uh, nobody's made a zero detailing tool. So I'm stuck using the blue one for, for now. There we go, cool. So that's that one, and we've got a door here. Now this is leaded glass, and it's also got a little sticker on it as well. Wow, this is completely full of wasps. Nice, let's not upset the wasps. So with that, I would just leave that, I would just wipe around the door, because I don't want to wreck their little sign. So just give it a wipe down, because it's done once a month as well. It's just light dust that's on there. Some little spider droppings and things, nothing too sinister. Just give it a clean up. Um, spider webs, that type of thing. Particularly look for in corners. That's where you want to be looking. And you can see there, that's just another little dropping. And there. Wow, it's just all I can hear behind me is a really high pitched buzz. Oh me, I am not a fan of wasps. Bees, I do not mind. Wasps are evil. Spawn of the evil man himself. There we go. That's all it needs. Nice clean door. There we go. Excellent. Okay, now this window is split into two. So what I'm going to do is do the top bit first, clean up my drips, and then do the bottom half. Okay, so let's do that now. So with the applicator, the longer it's sitting in your bucket and a belt, the more the solution will drip from the top of the applicator down into the bottom of the bucket on a belt. So what you might need to do is, because this top bit will start drying out, is basically turn your applicator round. So this is the dry bit now. And just give it a shake inside your bucket and a belt. Give both sides of your applicator a shake. So now we've got solution all over, evenly distributed on our applicator. So we don't have one wet side and one dry side if it's been sitting in there for a little while. Okay, so right, top bit first. Okay, now personally, I don't mind getting solution onto the frame here because the way I look at it is it gives me some solution to clean the frame with. So what I'll normally do is squeegee it down like that. And I haven't got to touch the glass because we're using our zero detailing squeegee. So I know the only solution left is on the frame. And that just helps me to get that frame nice and clean because it's got a bit of cleaning solution on there. I can just wipe it dry and clean. There we are. Okay, so again, we've got a little spider droppings on here. That'll come off no problem. Okay. Right. A lot of tractors going past here as well, being in the countryside. Right. And if down here is quite messy, you could always use the end of your applicator and just give it a scrub like that and then obviously dry it off at the end. So you can cut in pretty much any way you like. Cutting in is just starting on the window, but I like to kind of normally come across like that and pull down. Okay, so that is our window perfectly clean. Excellent, cool. Now, another good thing to carry around with you is a sill squeegee, because that will take off the excess off of the sill and keep your cloths a bit cleaner and drier for longer, so you won't have to wash quite so many. So use this first, pull that across the sill when you're finished squeegeeing, pop it away, and then use your cloth.
this next bit is rather entertaining. I've got two windows down there to do. So I'll squeeze through the Jumanji jungle. Previously on Bear Grylls. How to tackle this window with nothing but my wits and a shoelace. A little homemade six inch squeegee here as well can't buy it that size you have to buy a 10 inch and cut it down to six just so you know oh, i can hear buzzing behind me again how have i not been stung yet i don't know i don't think well if i was uh using my water fed pole i don't think i would probably get in with it in here it's a bit tight. There we go. Right, see if I can shuffle past here. I've had this customer for oh, maybe four or five years, something like that. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much looked the same all that time. Right, there we go. And there's another window around there as well, which I can't get to from the other side. So I'll do that while I'm around here as well. Okay, got a 12 and a six. And these are six inch for the top. Close out. 12 inch for the bottom. Something I got told years ago by the guy who trained me up. Shout out to Ben. Hopefully doing alright Ben. Um, he said always make sure the kitchen window is your best window. Because it's, that is the one that normally your customers will stand at for the longest. And look out of because they're standing there cleaning their dishes. So make sure anything in there, especially their kitchen windows, those should be your creme de la creme windows. Now I'm sure you'll make all of your windows just as equally good as each other, but uh, just take a mental note to make your kitchen windows as good as you can. Now these are stingy nettles, so I'm up against wasps and stingy nettles. So let's just try and squish these down a little bit. Oh, why me? There we go. Right, now in this instance, because, well I wouldn't say I'm a shorty, 5 foot 10, but I can't quite reach. So just to get that top bit, I've doubled up my cloth. So take it like that, put your squeegee inside of it, put the cloth over again, so it just kind of increases the thickness of the cloth. And that way you can use your tool as a bit of an extension frame cleaner device thing. There we go. Frames nice and clean. Cool. Right. So, as you can see, uh, this is the back of the house, and I come through that gate there and down there. So I can't quite reach this window from on this walkway. It's just a little bit far of a stretch trying to get over that banister, and that paint quite often comes off and it ends up all over your clothes. So it's just easier to come around here and do this window, and then from that window round get it from going through that gate which you'll see in a minute but uh yeah i don't know why i picked this one to film to be <laughs> to be honest it's a bit of an awkward one but yeah, i just thought hey ho i've got my camera with me i haven't done a video for a little while because i've been kind of out for the count so i thought hey why not why not okay so i think i've said this in a video before to be um be honest i think it was in how to be the fastest window cleaner series i did a three-part video but when you're doing traditional anyway um just make sure both hands are doing something so if number one hand is soaping something up get number two hand ready to do the next thing so a lot of especially old school window cleaners will clean with just one hand 
Um, my personal opinion is that just increases wear and tear on that one hand and also decreases the speed you can get the job done. So for me, left hand's got the applicator, right hand's gonna grab the squeegee. Okay, I'll just break this down. So I'm soaping it up, and as I'm soaping it up, this hand, right hand, is going down and getting the squeegee. So in this instance, I've already sized up the window. It's quite a reasonably big window, so I'm gonna get my 16 inch squeegee. So as I'm soaping that up, my right hand's got the squeegee ready. Now, as I'm putting my applicator away, I'm grabbing my cloth ready to do the final bit at the end. So get both hands working together as a team and you'll be more efficient and less wear and tear on your wrists as well. You're distributing that workload 50-50 between left and right hand as opposed to 100% of the work being done by one hand. So hopefully that helps. That's one of the reasons why I've got a bucket and a belt, one on each side, left hand, right hand. There you go. Of course, that window is a lovely. So I'm gonna squeeze back through here and uh, you can join me in a minute when I get around the back. Okay then folks, so I wanted to demonstrate to you how useful this A-frame ladder is. And I remember I was talking about that little groove before that can hold you on the edges of window frames and cells and things like that. So let me just demonstrate that. So I find the easiest way to put up a ladder of this type anyway, is to put my foot against the bottom and that just kind of secures it there. And my left foot goes under the bottom rung here. Now to get the ladder to lift up, you actually have to pull this bit towards you. And that basically unlocks these hooks, if you like, and you can lift it up. But rather than bending as I'm doing right now and having to do that at every window or every job, it's much easier just to put your foot underneath. Now this is much more comfortable to do if you've got boots on. In my case, I've got proper work boots with steel toe caps. So it's nice and comfortable for my feet. Stick it underneath, lift it up with your foot, and then that way you can just lift it up with your hand nice and easy, not having to bend and... Oh, I like to make life easy if I can, you know? As easy as possible. Now, let's put that on there for you so you can see. Okay, so you can see how it's on the corner there. Now, when I first started using a ladder of this type, I was a bit like, oh, don't like that. Um, it's on the corner of something. But then I remembered, oh yeah, of course, it's got the grooves cut out of the, the, that, that cap. So if you imagine, basically the edge of that wall is now inside of the groove on the top of that cap. So if I grab my ladder here, and try and move it. Look, I'm not, not holding it with my legs. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab it with my hands and give it a big shake from left to right. You'll see that it won't come off. Now I'm shoving that as hard as I possibly can. So, you know, it's gonna take a hurricane to be able to get that off of there. So nice and safe, wide legs at the bottom, groove in the top cap to hold you onto the edges of stuff. So you can literally put that ladder pretty much anywhere and uh, it's, it's just awesome. Really good A-frame window cleaning ladder, 27 rung by Ramsey in Scotland. So, all right, let's go up. So I like to do all my high windows first uh, and then do all the, the low ones now. Um, some people, I don't know, maybe want to do it slightly differently, but especially when you're doing water-fed pole, you need to do it in that order. But even with traditional, I prefer to get the uh, harder stuff done, if you like. Not that it's that hard, but you know what I mean. Going up and down a bigger ladder is a bit more harder work than doing ground floor stuff. So I like to go and do all my high stuff first and then do my ground floor stuff after. A nice little window in there. Okay, make sure I get that rubber sealed nice and clean. This is one of the reasons I don't like to leave a heap, like a big gap around the edges. I like to clean the rubber seals because they can get pretty dirty with them um, spider droppings and whatnot as well. It's just being thorough, guys. You know, I mean, each to their own. I mean, some people are not as thorough as that. Some people might think I'm oh, overboard with how clean I go, but wow, that's a squeaking against that rubber seal quite bad. It's a thick rubber gasket on the edges of that window. It's a different style. This is older PVC, so it's a bit squeaky, that one. Um, yeah, so. Just 
remember something that my dad always taught me. He was a joiner by trade and if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing right. So that's just always gonna stuck with me. And uh, you really make a name for yourself if you're really thorough like this and very few other companies are doing it to that extent then you really make a good name for yourself okay just coming down nice and safely one foot at a time none of this two rungs at a time malarkey right when i'm lifting the ladder off of the building two feet at the bottom of the ladder so it's in total control it's not going to slip out hands on the ladder and just pull it towards you so it's straight up and then unlock this hook thing again. So by pulling this little bar here up and you can lower it down. Just like that. Okay. So we're just going to temporarily put this just against here because I don't need it now and get these other little low windows done. Now I do need a top up of water. So when your solution starts to get really thick, and it becomes more soap than water. You'll notice it because it starts getting hard to apply the solution on the window. It starts to drag. So that's when you know you need to reapply water and reapply soap. So my applicator is starting to get a little bit dirty. So what I normally do is I'll dunk it in the water, take it straight out. So I'm trying to keep my water clean as long as I can. I've got obviously the gloves on. So I just run my fingers like that, make it like a claw shape if you like, and just dig into that applicator, get all the crud and stuff out of it, because I don't want to keep transferring dirt from window to window. Okay, so that kind of frees everything up if it's bits of paint or sticks or dead flies or whatever it is that's in there. And then what you do is, starting from one end, just squeeze all that stuff off of your applicator like that give it a visual inspection okay cool ready to go it's got nothing in it and i'm not going to scratch windows with any grit or anything that's in maybe stuck in there um so just look look after your tools and they look after you obviously again like i say i'm taking my time with this showing you what i'm doing and why i'm doing it wouldn't normally take this long but there we go right so i've reapplied with water so get our soap one bit of there one bit on there and that's more than enough Okay, so that's ready to go. Right, so if you remember, that was the window with the stingy nettles plants that I was at. So this is just the other side of that little fence. So take our damp cloth and just go over that frame, like so. Now hopefully you'll get something from this video. Um, potentially if you've just started window cleaning, this is maybe what you needed to see, which was just seeing how somebody who does it every day does little things like that. Um, and I think it's things that people like me probably take for granted that we just do, um, that actually somebody who's just starting needs to, to know. So I thought a video like this where there's no music and just explaining what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, hopefully will be beneficial to a few of you. It's quite a hot, humid day today. I feel like I need another t-shirt. Oh, sweating. And I'm, I'm in Scotland and it's hot, so something in the ozone layer is definitely knackered. frame so what i like to do when i'm wiping the frames as well just to make sure i don't touch the glass oh, i've got lovely dead flies on there nice is put just a few fingers inside of your cloth like that hold the excess bit of the cloth away from the glass because you don't want that hitting your nice clean glass so pull that away and just use that bit of the cloth you've got your fingers inside to wipe the frame and get right into the edges, into the grooves, and that just makes it absolutely perfect. Okay. Now 
personally, I mean, within the last year or so, I've really focused on doing traditional window cleaning. And the reason being is because there's such a big high demand for it where I live. Um, there's a lot of companies going around that are uh, using water fed poles now. Um, and a lot of companies that don't even know how to do traditional, to be honest. Uh, so getting a really good traditional window cleaner, if that's what you want, is uh, getting sort of far and few between. So what that basically does is it creates, uh, obviously there's a demand for it, but there's not the supply. So you can obviously um, see that, you know, somebody like me is just going to get inundated with messages, uh, which we do, which just it's just non-stop. Um, it's a bit of a shame because there's really good guys and companies going around with the water fed pole systems, but unfortunately there's the ones that are not doing such a good job are kind of outnumbering them and giving the other guys a bit of a bad name. So the water fed pole in my area hasn't, hasn't really got the greatest reputation. Um, I don't know, comment below and see if maybe it's the same where you are, maybe it's different, I don't know. But certainly where I am, it's uh, I get messages almost every single week and it usually starts with, uh, do you clean windows traditionally? Um, I just get that all the time. Well, you know, so I just found, right, okay, well, I'll, I'll focus on that and obviously charge accordingly because it takes longer. Um, it's more effort, takes more time, especially if it's got high windows, but just charge accordingly. So I usually charge um, around about maybe 50% more than I would have with a water fed pole. Um, obviously there's more cost to water fed pole. You've got resin and higher priced equipment to buy. That's the thing. But when it comes to how long you spend on the job, usually anyway, um, it's, it's quite a bit faster. So it depends what you want to do. Some people charge exactly the same, but for me, if it takes me longer, I charge more. Um, and because obviously the way I look at it, they're getting their, their windows done by hand, nose to glass. You know, I'm guaranteeing perfection as well as close to as possible. As you can see, I'm very thorough. Um, and I know for hundred percent before I drive off that it's absolutely perfect, uh, which I just couldn't obviously guarantee that with my water fed pole. Um, it's just personal preference. I do like it. Um, I use it pretty much every day on some jobs. But uh, I just don't, it's just not my default thing. Because I just, I like this guaranteed, you know, you've soaked up the window, you squeegee it down, you've wiped all the frames, you can look at the window and say, right, okay, that's good. And then you can move on to the next one. Peace of mind. You don't have to rely on customers telling you whether it was good or not, you know yourself. Which unfortunately I can't do with a water fed pole because I'm leaving the job wet. Um, I'm just hoping I don't get a phone call which normally I don't, to be fair. But I have had complaints in the past, um, which I can count on one hand how many complaints I've had. So it's not like really bad. But um, every complaint I've ever had has been the water fed pole, unfortunately. And it was a genuine complaint. Um, streaks, normally streaks and spotting. Um, usually it's just windows that just didn't come up very well with it potentially like things like that, air vents, drips out of there, or old seals that had held on to dirt and I've driven off and you get little drip marks all over the glass that's come out of the seals, which obviously you don't know until your customer tells you. So anyway, that's why I do things the way I do them anyway. So I do get that, asked that quite frequently, why I'm doing it this way. And that's why, because I want it as good as it can possibly be and know for 100% it is good. That's why. Like now, you can look at it. It's dry, it's clean, it's supreme. <laughs> now granted ladders is not for everybody and there's a danger element to ladders, so. Not everyone's cup of tea to go up and down ladders, and I respect that. And I respect people that use the water fed pole all the time. If they have customers that are happy to pay for that, 
and are happy with the service. Great, superb, splendid, just not for me. Try getting about and past these bushes. Ugh. Okay, so I can see on this glass there's a lot of spider dirt on here as well, little spots. So we'll get that off. So again, I'm gonna grab my applicator, give it a swish round in that end, a swish round in that end, it's ready to go. give that a good scrub. Now this Unger power sleeve is really good. Holds a good amount of water and it's got good scrubbing power so I quite like it. Now there's a lot of people been asking me about the new Liquidator 3 end clips or 3.0. Um, I've, I've ordered them but I'm still waiting for them to, to arrive. It's, it seems to be taking a long time between sort of them announcing that it was coming out to it actually getting here. Well, at window cleaning warehouse anyway. Um, I know in some places in the world people have had them for a little while, but uh, for some reason here it was just not coming over. I don't know why. Maybe it's the whole EU thing, I don't know. Who knows? But anyway, I'll be getting my Liquidator 3.0 clips to try very shortly and I'll give you an updated review on my thoughts of them if you're interested. And I'll put them through their paces. It also comes with the NXTR rubber, that blue stuff, which I'm not really a fan of. I did a review on it, um, but we'll see if they've maybe changed it at all. Probably haven't, but uh, I'll give it a whirl and see. Because uh, that rubber was advertised as being like a sweet symphony of orchestra across the glass, when actually, when you were using the blue Mormon rubber, it sounded more like a pig on the way to a slaughterhouse. It did not sound very pleasant, so we shall give it a try. I shall give it a try. Okay, now my cloth is starting to get a little bit damp. I can feel it, and actually, here it's uh, I don't know if you can hear that. Maybe not, but anyway, I can hear all that bubbly solution inside of the cloth. It's basically too saturated, so I've put that in my back pouch. That's for my dirty, wet cloths. And then in the front pouch, I've got loads of dry new ones. So, switch to a dry one. No point struggling on with a wet cloth, is there? Okay. All right, so that, guys, and girls, is this job done. Frames are beautiful, glass is beautiful, doors are beautiful. Me, <laughs> maybe not so. But anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video and it's a bit of a longer one. Let, let me know in the comments below if you like this type of video that's got no music, a bit longer, explaining what I do and why I do it. And uh, hopefully it was helpful, special, especially to you uh, new guys and girls that are maybe just getting into window cleaning. So anyway, any questions, pop them in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, be good, bye for now.